Hello and welcome to the Spiritual Seeds Podcast. This is a podcast for the spiritually curious among us. I'm your host, Leisha O'Connor, psychic, author, and spiritual teacher. It is so good to have you here. Hello, welcome back. Thanks for listening. Hope you're all having a nice week. Well, I mean, it's been another week of the world slowly burning itself to the ground. Uh, At times like these, I often think of the Michael Longley poem called Ceasefire. Now, I'm not big into poetry, but some poems are so powerful, you know, that they just stick with me. So I'm going to read it to you. He wrote it about the troubles in Northern Ireland, but the story is actually from Homer's Iliad, where Priam, who's the king of Troy, his son Hector has died in battle against Achilles. So Priam is begging Achilles for Hector's body back. Put in mind of his own father and moved to tears, Achilles took him by the hand and pushed the old king gently away. But Priam curled up at his feet and wept with him until their sadness filled the building. Taking Hector's corpse in his own hands, Achilles made sure it was washed and for the old king's sake laid out in uniform, ready for Priam to carry, wrapped like a present, home to Troy at daybreak. When they had eaten together, it pleased them both to stare at each other's beauty as lovers might. Achilles, built like a god, Priam, good-looking still and full of conversation, who earlier had sighed, I get down on my knees and do what must be done and kiss Achilles' hand, the killer of my son. Whew, that always gets me in the fields. I like how it shows compassion and tenderness and understanding and almost an affection between two enemies. That's not to in any way condone the absolute atrocities that are occurring today. Just to say that at some point I feel forgiveness will be needed for a ceasefire or better still peace to come about. So now let's shift gears out of an unexpected poetry corner (laughs) and please allow me to distract you with some jibber jabber okay in this podcast episode i'd like to tell you about what it's really like being psychic we're talking about the day-to-day stuff my hope is that you'll recognize something in yourself or be able to relate to what i'm saying so you don't feel so alone or weird because i'll tell you for most of my life i felt alone and weird but then i met jenny we're a good match two basic weirdos (laughs) if you haven't met jenny before she's my producer who may or may not be real. I'm not too sure yet. (laughs) Don't know myself anymore. Also, I believe that everyone can tap into these psychic gifts because we're all the same spiritual beings at our core. For most of my life, my psychic gifts were a plague on my land. (laughs) Honestly, they made life so much more difficult. But that's because I hadn't a clue what was going on. I literally didn't understand it. I presumed everyone else's mind worked in the same way, so I'm pretty sure I never really mentioned it to anyone. I, at the time, well, for a lot of time, a lot of my teens and 20s, I drank like an absolute calf, which was my main coping mechanism. So I didn't even have the headspace or maturity to consider or begin to process what was going on with me. It's only in the last year, even, that I fully, fully embraced and began to understand what it meant and how to use them for good. Not that I was, not that I was using them for evil or anything, you know. <laughs> Just that I would have preferred not to have them when I didn't understand them. And now, sure, I wouldn't be without them. I can't imagine living without being able to do what I can do as a psychic. I can see now that what I always felt was a burden is actually a massive blessing and a privilege. I feel a responsibility these days to use my gifts. I feel I've been given them and have been given the ability to understand them fully at this exact stage of my life for a reason. It would have been no good when I was 22. Sure, like I was cracked back then. 
<laughs> I wouldn't have been able to handle it. I feel I'm here now to make a positive impact on the world with the beautiful life transforming channelings and past life healings I do. So I love my psychic gifts now, like absolutely love them. But as I said, it certainly wasn't always this way. The biggest hindrance for me going up was definitely my clairsentience. That means that I feel other people's feelings. I might emotionally experience what other people around me are going through, but I'll also physically feel the effects of those emotions. For example, like if someone is feeling they can't speak their voice, I'll feel a blockage in my throat. Or if they're heartbroken, I'll feel a constriction in my chest or I'll feel their anxiety in my tummy, that sort of thing. Imagine if you can, for a moment, walking into a room full of people and suddenly feeling waves of emotion as you're hit with everyone's feelings in the room. That was my life. Hence the drinking to numb it out. That was my coping mechanism. One of them anyway. But the thing is, I didn't have a clue what was going on. So for most of my life, I thought everyone else's feelings were my feelings. I thought I was an absolute emotional wreck. Well, maybe I was as well, but it was a thousand times amplified by soaking up and then carrying everyone else's crap around with me. Of course, I didn't know how to release emotions, so all that emotional energy was stuck in my body. And I'm certain it contributed to the digestive issues that I've had for most of my life too. The other consequence is that it was so overwhelming that I shut myself off from registering all these emotions. I couldn't handle it, so I would dissociate. And just to take a sidebar, in case you don't know, dissociation is where your consciousness sort of hovers out of your body as a means of coping. So you're rarely fully present in any situation. You kind of compartmentalize your experiences, you know. That's at least my lay woman's understanding of it. It's common with people who suffer like massive trauma. But for me, it was from constant mini emotional trauma. It's a protective mechanism that stops you remembering the events. But when you start not being present all the time, it means you also don't feel everything else like joy or happiness. So that sucks. I was recently listening to Andrew Huberman's podcast about self-hypnosis, which can help with dissociation and the effects of it. So very interesting stuff worth a listen. It was so difficult to absorb everything that I was completely disconnected from my own emotions. And even I remember when I started going to psychotherapy when I was about 30, I had so much difficulty recognizing or identifying my emotions. I literally couldn't name them. My whole life I had had to cut myself off from all emotion so I wouldn't lose my mind. So I had no relationship with them except to think that to be emotional was bad or weak. I used to even cry much back then. I remember being quite proud of myself and that I only cried about once a year or even longer, come to think of it, compared to now, where <laughs> I'm a blubbering mess at every opportunity. Love and I'll go cry. I can't even think about, you know, that John Lewis ad with the little boy and the penguins. <laughs> oh my God. I can't even think about that without welling up. I'm actually, oh, I could feel. <laughs> I'm welling up right now just thinking about it. I can feel the lump in my throat. I love it though, <laughs> you know. I love being emotional. It's it's so quick and easy to clear emotion when you have a good old cry. It just gets it out of you, it gets it out of your system. As a massage therapist for 14 years, I did frequently ground myself. But the best thing ever for me, even before I started to fully explore and understand my psychic gifts, was to get into energy healing and regularly practicing Qigong. Both are fantastic ways of clearing off emotion and energy that are stuck to you or stuck in you, whether it came from you or someone else in the first place. So when I finally identified that most of my emotions were not mine, I could start to see it as the superpower that it is. When of course I learned how to control it, the most important thing to get used to if you feel you're someone who soaks up others' emotions is to protect yourself, like energetically protect yourself. Ground yourself by visualizing roots growing from your feet into the earth and also visualizing a golden sphere of energy surrounding you when you're out and about or spending time with people. Archangel Michael is fantastic to call in for protection when you need it. Just setting the intention that only your energy is allowed inside this protective golden sphere. 
In fact, let's take 30 seconds now to protect our energetic space. So take a deep breath into your abdomen and release it with a long, slow exhale. Imagine a spark of golden light in the center of your heart space, in the middle of your chest. With each breath in, this golden spark becomes bigger and bigger. As it grows, it pushes out any stagnant energy and creates a protective layer of golden light. Keep visualizing until it is as big as your body or as large as you would like it to be. Set the intention that you are protected for the rest of the day and only energy that you want can permeate this sphere of light. I'm pretty good at energetic protection these days, but you know, sometimes I forget or I'm tired or whatever. So I still absorb other people's shit, especially if it's someone I care about. When I'm feeling emotionally cluttered, I visualize everything that isn't mine being drawn out of me like a magnet and it just dissolves into the earth where Mother Earth recycles it and changes it into energy that grows into flowers and trees and what have you. She's pretty awesome like that. And then I tune in with myself and I see what's left. At that point, I know that the emotions that I'm still feeling are my own and I deal with them how you're supposed to. (laughs) By ignoring them. (laughs) I know, I know, of course not. (laughs) Actually, the best way to deal with emotions is just to acknowledge them and they'll move on. They just want you to know that they're there. So once you have these techniques in place, you can dial your clairsentience up or down when needed by increasing or decreasing your protective barrier. And that protective barrier can be the golden sphere light or it can be anything you want it to be. When I'm doing a healing, for example, my clairsentience will be dialed all the way up to 11. But when I'm doing my grocery shopping, it's dialed all the way down to one. It's deciding whether that wall around me needs to be 30 inches of titanium or made from nice soft feathers that can be brushed aside when needed. The important thing to note is that you and you alone are in charge of this. Mm Mm-hmm. My other strongest psychic gift would be clairvoyance, which is clear seeing. I suppose, to be fair, I've never really had any negative side effects of this one that I can think of. It's always just been entertaining, though I never understood it or learned how to use it until recently. I always thought I just had a wild imagination, and when I would think about things, I would see them inside my head like a movie. And like any visions I ever had happened inside my mind, not out in the open, which is from watching movies and Charmed. I loved Charmed when I was younger. You would think that like a vision is supposed to happen out in the open in front of you, like around, you know, in the space around you, as opposed to inside your mind. I just think that it was my overactive imagination and I never really paid much attention to them that I can remember, really. As I was saying earlier, I just presumed everyone else's mind worked in the same way. Clearly, communication is something I've struggled with all my life. (laughs) And here I am doing a podcast. Healing's possible, guys. I can remember being very young and being in bed in the dark and seeing streams of energy and light coming from my hands and playing with it and teasing it and making patterns with the energy and balls of energy and stuff, which is all clairvoyance. I don't even know what I must have thought was going on. God, I really wish I had clearer childhood memories, but as I was saying, I was dissociating most of the time, which totally messes with your formation of memories. For most of my life, I would convince myself that anything I saw around me that I couldn't physically touch was just a trick of the light or my eyes playing tricks on me. Nowadays, I can tune in psychically and recognize wafts of energy around me as beings of light or ascended masters or goddesses or angels, whatever. Or I quite often see what looks like a star in front of me. Maybe you call it like an orb, but to me it kind of looks more like a star. So it might be in front of me or beside me in my peripheral vision. It literally looks like a star in the night sky, but I'll see it in daylight in the room in front of me and it'll appear like a spark and just grow bright for a second and then it's gone as quickly as it appears. To be honest, they're actually really comforting. They kind of come at important times. Most of my work especially past life healing, is done primarily with clairvoyance 
and a combination of the rest of my psychic skills, like clear audience, which is clear hearing. This wouldn't be my strongest one, but sometimes it's extremely loud and clear. I've never, to my memory, actually heard a voice out loud outside my body, but I hear, and I use air quotes here, hear it inside my head. It's usually very specific pieces of guidance. It'll be something exact like ring such and such and ask how they are or release your podcast at 3pm or something, something like that. My clear audience seems to come quite wrapped up in my clear cognizance, which is clear knowing. So when I hear something, I can tune in and know where or who the guidance is coming from and whether or not it's real. This takes a bit of practice with learning how to tune into your intuition and higher self and to tune out your egoic voice. But it's a fantastic, really, truly fantastic skill to have. It's like always knowing the full picture, even if you only have a few pieces of information. Basically, I can't be fooled. (laughs) So don't even bother trying. (laughs) If you think you've fooled me and gotten away with it, it's actually that I couldn't be arsed bringing it up, (laughs) to be honest. (laughs) Though admittedly there are times it would be kind of me to let people know that I know what's going on beneath the surface. Yes, Jenny, I see you looking at me. Because I'm claircognizant, I know that you want to speak more and have more creative expression on the podcast. We'll look into it. We will, we will, we will. Yeah, I have known for a long time, but you see, I just wanted you to have the empowering experience of saying it first. Wouldn't you have felt empowered? What's that? You think I should stop being such a condescending bitch? That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Always speaking from the heart. It's what I love about you, Jen. I love it. (laughs) What I've begun to realise now is that I'll get a particular feeling about someone or something and... This is hard to describe, but it's like I get a read on their energy and it communicates to me the potentials of how that energy can play out. Does that make sense? Like when you get a bad feeling about someone new you meet, you can't explain it logically. It just is what it is. And there's not much that can change your mind. For example, when I was in my final year of secondary school, I remember seeing George Bush being inaugurated as president and now I knew nothing about American politics at the time. I wouldn't even have known the difference between a Democrat and a Republican, literally clueless. But I remember looking into his eyes, I can still see that, you know, that kind of smirky sort of look that he has. And I got this deep feeling of dread and danger and that something very, very bad was going to happen. It felt like a rock inside my chest mixed with nausea. And of course, later that year, 9-11 happened, followed by 20 years of war and the effects of which still continue today. That was clear cognizance in action. But you know, I didn't really trust those feelings or I would think that's just a thought or my imagination. Don't be listening to that sort of thing. I know now that it was a psychic energetic premonition. But sure, I'd been raised in the 80s where I wasn't exactly encouraged to have my own voice or trust my own thoughts. So I suppressed the bejeepers out of my clear cognizance. I know it got me out of a few scrapes growing up, though. If only I could remember them. (laughs) In my sessions, when I'm really in the zone, I don't distinguish one psychic gift from another. It's like they all merge together to deliver the guidance or messages in whatever way is best. And if you begin to practice tuning into these, you may begin to notice the same. Like, for example, you'll ask your guides, uh, what kind of healing would be good for me today? And in your mind, you see a river and then you hear meditate and you get this feeling of relaxation in your body. And you know, deep down, you know, it's all telling you to go to a quiet spot at the river near your house and that meditation will bring you the healing you need through relaxation. But it's all coming together as one impression, if that makes sense. Clear cognizance or the connection to my intuition or higher self, whatever you want to call it, plays a huge part in how I live my life today. I literally base most of my decisions on this inner guidance system. 
I never really needed to do anything to strengthen it. It was more a case of removing the obstacles in its way, like removing the doubt and lack of trust I had in myself put there by a lifetime of gaslighting. That took a while, but that trust and faith I have in myself now is so strong. I actually can't believe how far I've come sometimes. I really, really feel so bloody lucky, to be honest. Anyways, lads, I'm reopening the doors to my one-to-one spiritual mentorship to unlock your channeling gifts. If you'd like guidance through your journey back to your psychic gifts, you'll find all the info at my link in bio over on Instagram at leisha.o.connor. Also, when you subscribe to my newsletter, you receive a free demystifying psychic gifts guide. So if you'd like more on what we discussed today, that's there. It explains the four clears in a relatable way and gives you a way to practice each of them. So you can get to work on that. And if you'd like to talk about the show, you can email me on spiritualseedspodcast at gmail.com. Talk to you soon. Bye. (laughs) 